We're going to show you our nook. Apple has acquired Lala, and World Cup is going to be shot in 3D. It's Monday, December 7th. I'm Natalie Del Conte, and it's time to get loaded. We received our review Barnes & Noble Nook over the weekend. Now, I've had it for only two days, but I do find it to be slightly buggy. It's hard to get used to navigating one screen with another screen, and the touch is not quite as responsive as I would like. David Carnoy has a full review. Take a look. Features the same 6-inch e-ink screen as the Kindle and has a free AT&T 3G wireless connection for downloading e-books over the air. But the Nook is different from the Kindle in a few small but important ways. First and foremost, the Nook has a separate color capacitive touch screen that allows you to navigate content and use a virtual keyboard for typing searches and annotations. That touch screen is similar to the screen that's found on the iPhone or iPod Touch, though this one isn't quite as responsive. Using the touch screen navigation pad does take some getting used to particularly if you're used to using a touchscreen phone like the iPhone. Your initial urge is to touch the ink part of the screen, but then you gradually get used to the concept of confining your touches to the screen at the bottom and the Nook logo that sits just above the screen. That Nook button serves as a home button that turns the color screen on when it's asleep. Remember, this is a first generation model, so we will give it some leeway. Still, you can't buy it anyway. It's on back order for anyone who hasn't pre-ordered until January. We have a lot of Google news to cover today. First off, Google has acquired a company called AppJet. AppJet has a product called Etherpad. It can import documents and then group them into what they call pads. So you could collaborate, say, a Word doc, a PDF, or a plain text. This sounds like Google Wave, or at least like it could play nicely with Google Wave, a service which I have yet Yet to find a use for. Google has also launched a translated search option to let you find information in other languages. You find this in the show options menu and Google will choose the best language to search that term in. Google also launched its own dictionary which is handy. I'm slightly surprised they didn't already have one. You can find it at google.com slash dictionary. And finally, Google has added a real-time stream of news to Google Finance. It's a constantly updated Google News powered stream of news stories related to the general market or the terms in your profile. Phew, that's a lot of Google News. We're done with that now. Apple has made a rare acquisition. The company is going to acquire Lala, a music discovery and download service. Apple doesn't usually buy up other technologies. They like to make everything in-house. This is rare, but Lala is a great product, and it makes sense if Apple wants more of a web presence in music sales. Right now, they only sell through iTunes. And maybe Apple will get into streaming, too. You would think that they would have to eventually. Speaking of Apple, there's a new security fix for OS X. It came out late last week, and it said to plug in some security holes for Leopard and Snow Leopard. Microsoft and Adobe are supposed to issue security updates of their own on Tuesday, so just for fun, everyone update their operating system. Microsoft has stopped selling its $150 Windows 7 family pack in the U.S. The company says the offer was for a limited time only and it would end when supplies were exhausted. The family pack allowed users to buy three licenses of Windows 7 Home Premium valued at $119 separately. It was a huge savings that perhaps was a bit too much for Microsoft to handle. Retailers are already jacking up the prices for the inventory that they still may have left. Just curious though, how do you run out of software? Football fans are going to like this. The 2010 World Cup is going to be in 3D. Of course, I'm talking about proper football, not American football. Sony has signed a deal with FIFA, the organization that organizes the World Cup, to record up to 25 games in 3D. They won't actually broadcast publicly in 3D, seeing as almost no one has the technology to watch that in their homes. But they'll record in 3D and then show the games in Sony booths at FIFA events around the world. Researchers published results of a 30-year study in Scandinavia and found no link between mobile phones and brain tumors. The study found no increase in brain tumors since cell phones gained popularity in the 90s. Of course, this is not definitive and we can expect research in this area to continue, but this is an area of research that can be spurious. We're surrounded by so much radiation all the time, so it's hard to prove causality, but the fact that no direct increase in tumors has been found is encouraging. Those are all your headlines for today. I will see you tomorrow with more. Thank you for watching. I'm Natalie Del Conte with CNET TV, and you've just been loaded.